the number one question on everyone's mind for all the thirsty ladies out there are you single the malolo go tato let's go i'm an all sweet out here all me and me go see yo needles from the west side to the east coast so ain't nobody rapping like this what i'm not sure my name of my click you up todos los dias manito dale ya tu sabe huh What's up? Uno, 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 you guys, oh my gosh, if you don't have this book yet, you absolutely need to go get it. If you're in PA school, if you're trying to get into PA school, go right now to this website. Um, it's www.pantsprepperls.com. Go right now and get this because this is single-handedly making PAs, okay? <laughs> like This is like putting PAs out there. And I know I've done quite a few videos just uh, talking about pants in and of itself and how it's helped me in my studying. So this is really exciting being able to talk to you and um, just get some insight behind it. Um, I know everybody wants to just find out a little bit more about the man behind the book. So awesome. this is really gonna be a great treat for you guys. If you guys have not seen my other True Life series, please go ahead and do so. I have a playlist with all of these different True Life series about being minority, owning your own business. So you can go check that out on my channel right now. So, the number one question on everyone's mind for all the thirsty ladies out there, are you single? I am single. Are you single? <laughs> are you looking? Uh, almost. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm finishing up this app now, so once the app is done, then I'll have much more time. Okay, okay. So now that we got that out of the way, it's a little light, because trust me, like, everybody wanted to know that oh, pretty wow. much. Like, I was like, well, I mean, I saw a picture of you, and it looked like you had a wedding ring on, so... Yeah, Some of the girls that I was talking to, yeah. I was like, well, I think he has a, re a wedding ring. And they're like, oh, man. So now you just made people's lives a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about you. Tell me about Dwayne. Gotcha. So a little fun fact about me is that um, besides being a PA, I actually do uh, modeling for like streetwear, uh, for like high fashion streetwear. So I'm diversified in the things that I get myself <laughs> into. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, originally born for, born in Panama, so I'm you know Hispanic and African American. You, oh, so you're fluent in Spanish? Yeah, actually Spanish is my first language, so I'm always thinking my accent's kind of funny because it's kind of mixed between Spanish, English, and Caribbean. Okay. But uh, you know, so I was raised uh, in New York, so I'm a New Yorker by heart, uh, Panama by blood, but still um, New Yorker. So I love being. I've always been here. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of who I am on the side besides doing the. But you were born in Panama. Yeah, I was born there. Okay. I came here when I was about six. Okay, all right. So I'm, I'm a New Yorker by heart. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And I heard the little accent coming out, so I was like, ah, oh, I don't know if that's like the New York thing or if it's Caribbean, but that's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. it's kind cool. of like a weird hybrid. So people are like, where are you from? They know I'm not from here, but they don't know where exactly. Yeah, I wanted to learn another language. Just, I still haven't come across doing that yet, yeah. so we'll you're see. Like, you know, you're busy right now. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah. do you wear urban streetwear like on a, like I, that's every me. day? Yeah, that's I'm, what never, you're I'm never like the the facade that people always see. Like okay. the exact opposite of that. Okay, I'm not okay. Because I'm pretty sure everybody just sees white coat. Yeah. Waves in the hair. I think I've seen that picture a couple times. Yeah. Waves, white, white coat. coat. It's the point where sometimes I like if I'm on the street and I'm like in my regular clothes, people pass me and have no idea it's me. I mean, and that's good. That's a yeah. benefit. Though. It is. A good that's good. a benefit. I mean, I would not want to be walking down the street and everybody knows who you are because that, I mean, that kind of just takes away from your privacy. So, in your private life, like, what do you like to do? Um, do you? My go biggest out thing and... I do is travel. I love okay. to travel. Okay. And I love dancing, so I like I'll go out to like clubs and dance. What kind of dancing? Uh, Spanish, hip hop, dancing. Or maybe a little bit of everything. Are you so now? Are you like? Are you a n not necessarily trained, but do you do like dance moves, or are you like a club dancer? Because that's like two different types of dancers. Yeah, it's not choreographed. It's all natural. <laughs> <laughs> that's a club dancer. That's a club dancer. That's a club dancer. That's a club dancer. Okay. I actually went to LaGuardia School of Performing Arts, oh, uh, the fame okay. school. So actually, I trained in vocal, but at the time I was going there, my girlfriend she was a dancer, and so like I would, you know, I would 
cut class, to be honest, I cut class and would like spend some time and hang out with her for a few hours up there. And so I was never really formally trained in dance, but I learned a lot of technique without realizing I was learning technique being okay. there. Um, and so it kind of is like, you know, it's a nice blend between acting, dancing, and singing. So you sing? You're, I used you're to a singer? sing. I, don't I mean, sing I don't know if anybody <laughs> can say they used to sing. Like, do you ever lose your vocal talent? Like, you can, can still hold a, a can you still rusty. hold a note? You can I can still hold a note, but the pipes a little, yes. Okay. I was a choir director for, like, many okay. years, so. Okay. Well, if you if you yeah. church choir, you can sing if you're a church choir. Do you do church hands? I do church hands, bro. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay. I'm an official church boy. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's a good thing. Well, that's cool. I mean, these are things that I would have never known just from the persona that you yeah. see on social media and that is that is a hint for some of you guys okay um social media isn't all that is cracked up to be so oh, yeah. what you see on social media that's not it so just be aware of that just um in general and in your dating life as well yeah definitely in personal life you can see that social media is pretty much how people want to portray themselves yeah. and that's kind of the story that they put out there but it could be very different when you meet them in person like oh you're not that person that I saw. <laughs> <laughs> so you have some bad experiences with that. I have that. some bad experiences okay. with that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so come with your A game, y'all. All right, after this, and you when you hit him up for a book, you come with your A game. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was Dwayne outside of yes. Pants Prep Pearls, you guys. But now we're going to get to Dwayne inside, behind Pants Prep Pearls. Um, so we're going to just have the questions. He's going to be here. I'm going to step on out, and I'll see you guys at the end of this. Somebody is getting Pants Prep Whoop, 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 whoop. And not only are you getting pants prep pearls, but you are getting a signed copy of y'all getting this brand new copy, fresh, and it's gonna be signed by Dwayne right now. Oh. And he's gonna put a little something special in it for you. Um, so just be sure to read it when you. Oh, you got to. Like it's not for everybody. You can't. Yes, it is. No, no man. That's for somebody special. Uh, well, they need to know that it was him. It's him. They can see it's him. It's, this is him, the man, Dwayne A. Williams, writing you something special. But it that you are not a warrior, you are a warrior. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so that was oh. the one that I like. That's the one that I like. Okay. This is a gift from Dwayne for one of you guys. So be ready for this. The, uh, the details of the giveaway will be down below. I'll put that in the description box down below. So uh, just don't forget to go look there and see how you can win this signed copy of Pants Prep Pearls. Hi, my name is Dwayne A. Williams, author of Pants Prep Pearls, and this is my true life. life. So, Pants Prep Pearls to me is the ultimate study guide. It's more than just preparing you for the pants. Uh, I designed the book so that it's helpful for all three years of, of PA education. So, for your didactic year, it's great for studying for uh, exams uh, in the different fields. Um, for clinical year, it's also great because um, as a preceptor, there's certain times that there are things that we would pimp you guys on. And for those who don't know what pimping is, as preceptors, we kind of like haze students and say, like, what's the most common cause of acute pancreatitis? And there's certain things you just have to know on rotations. And so what I did with the book was I put those things in bold and italicized so that way students can know that these are things that I need to know about this disorder so that they can kind of excel on their rotations and of course ultimately to basically pass the pants. So it's more than just a prep for the pants but again it's kind of like an ultimate study guide for PA school in general. Uh, so I kind of was like a tongue twister but the idea was again I wanted people to know that it was for the pants but I also wanted to make the people know that it was like all the things that you need to know without the fluff so these are just like the pearls these are the most important things to know. Um, you know, I think sometimes when we're studying a lot of information, we kind of don't know what's the things that are most important, what are the take home points. And so I tried to like basically put those pearls in there so you know that if I don't know anything about this disease, I definitely will know these high yield points so that that way you can kind of know all the stuff you need for the exam itself. So basically I was, uh, I would do like basically board prep for different students kind of like on a private session and my notes were very distinct that I would hand out to the students. And then one day I was on the train and about like 10 students had these notes and my notes are very characteristics with the bold and italicized. Uh, those who use the book know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I kind of highlight certain things in a certain way. And, but the thing was that they weren't my students. And so I said, where'd you guys get this from? They said, wow, this, you know, these notes are really helping me to do well in this exam. And so that's when I realized that I had an idea about writing a book that could help other people 
because not only students that I was working with was helping, but it was helping many other people as well. Um, the process of writing a book, however, you know, with me not knowing I was going to write a book, I had no idea how to write a book. That's like YouTube and Google, kind of like the idea of how to be an author. Um, and then when I finally wrote the book and I went to different companies to publish it, a lot of them were like, well, it's very different than the traditional book, which is the reason why I wrote the book, because I wanted it to be very different. I study very differently. And when books are kind of boring and looking the exact same, I kind of get bored with it. Um, and so I wanted to go for a different look. And a lot of companies didn't want to kind of take that chance with the different type of book. Um, and so what I decided to do was just do self-publishing and just do it myself. Um, which in the end route ended up being better for me because I had more control over the book. I had more control of how I presented my material and to do it my way. And which kind of was a great thing to be able to do. Uh, there were so many times when I started the book process and said, look, I just, should I do this? Um, I think the first step was kind of, again, not being an author and kind of want to do something that was very different and was already out there. You know, I kind of wanted to go with the deci deciding to kind of make the book almost like if you put all your notes together um, in one area, that's what the book was going to be like. So I didn't want it to be the traditional textbook. So I think trying to basically make it more authentic was one challenge alone. Teaching medicine, making standardized, but still making it more, uh, more like a user friendly, more student friendly was the first challenge. Um, and then pretty much the book is kind of like a one man show. Like I wrote all the stuff in the book. I kind of edited the book myself. I kind of got the photos. I kind of basically did, pretty much did everything. Index, all of this stuff I did myself. And so that was a big challenge because again, it was like all, making all the different pieces fit together at the same time was kind of difficult. And then even with that, I remember when I was trying to like publish it, it was just a lot of process with that as well. Um, and a lot of people were like, well, you know, you're not a known author. And so you want to have that challenge of no one wanting to buy your book. Um, and I think, I think that a lot of those challenges uh, were very difficult for me in the beginning, but then I just felt like I had something in me that I had to put out there. And I said, if no one buys the book, that's fine, but at least I've made that effort to put out what I felt in my heart was different out there and, and the best book for me. Uh, you know, sometimes I've, I've learned in life that sometimes you're in a process of doing something and you don't really have an idea that you're on that process. Um, I mean, I've been teaching now for 16 years, and so I would teach different uh, courses, and I kind of had like my notes that were very specific, and um, not realizing I was making a book, but I kind of was making a book on in that process, and then once I decided to make the book, it's kind of when I put all of it together. Um, but it was pretty much, I kind of sacrificed friends, family, relationship, hence why I'm single now, uh, because again, it was a lot of, you know, it was very intense to kind of basically put a 500-page medical book together by yourself and edited and all that stuff like that and so but I was really passionate about it and so because I was so passionate about it I kind of just put all my time and energy into doing it. Uh, so like I said I had the notes from before not necessarily in a, in a kind of a book form uh, so once I decided to actually go forth and making the book it took me about two and a half years to kind of fully put it all together um, in book form and kind of go through the editing process um, I think that that was the biggest challenge, like I said, just trying to put it all together to make it all cohesive um, and very easy to use. You know, ironically, I didn't think it was going to be this big. The real idea behind writing the book besides helping students out was that I actually wanted to do board review courses because I felt like I was really good at doing board review courses, but I didn't really have the credentials. I, you know, I didn't, you know, I wasn't at the time, I wasn't a full-time faculty on any school. And I didn't really have anything to say, well, I am an author, you know, to basically say that I can do a board review course. And so the book was kind of like a means to an end. I was trying to write the book so that later on when I did board review courses, I can say, look, this is the author of this book, so therefore you should come to the board review course. Um, and so pretty much I wrote it, like I said, I went through self-publishing, so I didn't really have a good marketing uh, team. It pretty much was just me and my manager. Um, but I pretty much used social media and Instagram I created a hashtag, which everyone knows now is PPP Warriors. So that people who did use the book could feel like they were part of a community. Um, but I definitely didn't think it was going to be like number one on Amazon. I definitely didn't think, as people, some people call it, the pay school bible. Uh, it's kind of amazing to me the process that I went through in seeing how the book has grown and helping so many people out in terms of uh, its usefulness and its impactfulness in the profession, both not only for students, but also for people who are practicing as well. But I'm happy about it though, it's a great thing. So I'm excited about it and you know, there's much more to come. 
yeah, so Casper Pearls is my personal baby. It's my favorite of all my three books. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's kind of like the one that, I, you know, is the one that started everything off. It was the one that was my hardest challenge. But in addition to the Pants Per Pearls, I do have a Pants and Pammy question book. It's kind of like 600 pants style questions. What's good about it is almost like there's a proverb in the Bible that says, you know, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And so what my question book teaches you is kind of how to think as a strategist in terms of taking an exam and how to think through a question and know how to pick out what's right in the question when you're down to two choices and you're not really sure. Um, so that's my other baby. The third one is what's called the Ultimate Medical Mnemonic Comic Book. It's kind of a fun way to study. It's kind of basically taking mnemonics to kind of help you to remember those much difficult topics. Um, I also have an app called FlipMed, which is kind of like when you want to study on the go, you kind of basically like look at different topics. Um, it's doing really well right now. And next month, I'm actually very excited about this new project, which is going to be the Pants and Pan Pants Question app. It's going to be basically 2,000 pants style questions, but you can create an exam. So let's say you're studying for cardiology uh, in your first year and you want to just basically study cardiology questions, you can pretty much create your exam and it will kind of find your weaknesses and kind of help to improve your, your strengths as well. So that's kind of like my newest baby that I'm very excited about. So right now I'm a full-time, I'm the director of didactic education at the Long Island University program. I um, also teach as an adjunct faculty for the Wild Cornell PA program. Um, as well as go to different schools. I do uh, guest lectures at school, so any school that wants me to come, reach out to me, I'll definitely come to your school and uh, you know, share with you my pearls and things like that of life. But teaching is really my biggest passion now. I mean, medicine's my passion, it's kind of what got me to this place, but I feel like I have a, a gift in terms of making difficult things simpler. Um, and so I've kind of been following that gift of teaching um, with board review courses and also with teaching clinical medicine. Um, and so my passion really is teaching and showing students that medicine is really not as bad as it seems or as daunting as it seems once you have a strategy on how to approach medicine. Um, so I work the P's. So when you're le learning a disease, you should first start with the pathophys of the disease. You know, how does that disease present based upon that pathophys? You know, how do you pick up the disease on testing based upon the pathophys? And then how do you treat it, which ultimately reverses the pathophys? So if you kind of understand that one disease in one line, pretty much everything about that disease will help to follow you can kind of basically put all that information into a very small box and therefore be able to easily access that box whenever you need it. So um, teaching is my biggest passion right now. I love teaching. I love being around students. I love when students get that aha moment like, ah, oh, it makes sense. That's kind of what makes me feel really good inside and warm and fuzzy, so to speak. The first thing I would talk about, the biggest thing I learned is one is that don't let anything uh, stand in the way of your dreams. Most importantly, yourself. Um, you know, when I decided to write the book, I kind of doubted. I said, you know, I'm not an author. You know, no one knows who I am. I'm self-publishing the book, and I went through the stumbling block of, of doing that as well. Um, but I never gave up on myself, and I said, you know what? I really believe in the product that I have, and I believe that people will end up gravitating toward it as well. Um, I remember actually when I first put the book out, and no one knew the book. I remember going to this one school and trying to basically peddle the book, so I had my Book and I said, look, no one knows about this book, but it's going to become the standard in, the, in medicine. And I remember the director of that program kind of looked at me and was like, what school you go to? And I explained and he said, you know, was, does anyone know this book? And basically, basically told me they don't want to use the book because it's kind of like a new book and it's not really tried and tested yet. Um, and my goal was, I said, you know what, next year I'm going to come back to the school and all the students will have it. It's going to force this director to kind of like basically buy the book. And ironically, uh, a year later, all the students end up buying the book. Um, the director of that program ended up coming to me and say, look, I actually use it to pass my recertification. And to me, that was like a big moment for me because it was the first time that I tried to basically sell this book and it was pretty much denied and said, no, you know, they didn't want to believe in the book. And then the director ended up not only believing in the book, but using it as herself to pass her recertification exam. And so it taught me one is that you have to believe in yourself more than anything else and never let anything or anyone, including yourself, stop you from your goal. If you believe in yourself and you have a goal, follow it all the way through. Don't stop just because things are going to mess up. Things are going to naturally mess up anyway, but if you believe in yourself and you're a warrior, you're going to always win. The second biggest thing I would say is um, you have to have tough skin. Um, no one's going to love everything that you do. You know, as much as people love Pants Pearl, there are people who hate it or don't really like it. And for me, it was a big struggle first when, you know, you get those five stars, you're like excited, but when you get that first one star, it's like it's devastating to you because you're like, wow, this is my baby and someone hates it. 
Um, but one, it, it teaches you that one, not, not everyone's going to love it, but for those who, for every five that hate it, there's a hundred who love it and you're helping other people out. And so you can't let the haters, so to quote unquote, stop you from doing what you want to love to do because that's the most important component of it. It's a blessing beyond words for me. Um, one, because of the fact that not only am I inspiring PAs, but like a lot of my friends, uh, I have a few friends of mine. Um, actually, one of them is my manager, Pamela Bodley, who after she saw me write books, she decided to write three books of her own. Um, a lot of my friends have decided to become authors because they saw me go through that process. They saw me struggle. But they also saw how I triumphed at the end of it. And so I've not only inspired people to write medical stuff, but also people to kind of basically go through their own businesses as well. Um, one of my little brothers, he actually decided to do a candle business because he saw what I went through with my business. And so um, it's been a blessing to be able to not only reach the people that I don't know, but also the people that I'm surrounded by to inspire them to kind of follow their dreams. I think many people have dreams and they're kind of so scared of what would happen if it actually comes true. Although you want it to come true, you're kind of really scared about that. And I think that when people see that someone has done it and gone through that process, it gives them that inspiration. Um, also, like when students say to me, you know, I've failed the boards a few times and your books or your products have helped me become, have passed, uh, that's a blessing because not only am I now helping that student, but I'm helping the patients that the students will see. Um, so it can become a lot of times on, in the sense that I can be at home or hanging out and someone will walk up to me and ask me questions about like medicine when I'm not in, in the mo mind state for speaking about medicine. But despite that, I've been, I've been able to travel across the country doing stuff. I've traveled across the world doing stuff related to the books and, and stuff like that. And so it's been a blessing for me just meeting people and hearing stories of how the book has helped them become better students and ultimately better clinicians. Um, and also making people realize that they can follow their dreams and that you know you can have no backing, no major publishing company, and become the number one in whatever it is that you do as well. Um, so it's been a blessing fully to me. It's also made me become a better person because now I realize that I just can't put out a mediocre product. People rely on it. And so I have to put out my all and my best. So it's been a blessing not only to people, but also to me as well. It's made me a better person besides making other people better clinicians and better people. I mean, one of the reasons that I use the hashtag PPP Warriors to kind of basically uh, address my followers and people that appreciate the book is because I believe words are very powerful um, and so I didn't just want to just say you know people PPP pearls or whatever it was more warriors because what I, when I look when I think about what a warrior is a warrior is fighting a battle all every day they're fighting a battle and a warrior gets wounded they get worried they get tired but the warrior always continues to fight because they know that they're going to always win at the end of the day. You may lose some battles along the way, um, but you're going to win the war at the end of the day. Um, I think that PA school, looking at back at my entire life, um, you know, this book was the hardest book that I ever wrote of all the three books. Um, but looking at life, looking at the books, looking at the products, nothing was as hard as PA school itself was. You're learning all of medicine literally in two years. Um, you know, you're away from your friends, your family, dealing with your own personal things. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do in your life, but when you get on the other side of it, it's gonna be one of the most rewarding things. The thing about it, you just have to keep going, you know. You have those breaks in between, take those breaks, kind of recharge your battery. Know that, you know, you were chosen out of a thousand people who applied to that school, you got that seat, which means that there's something in you that people saw that they realized that you have what it takes to do it. You have to realize that even when you're tired, even when you're wounded, even when you're weary, remember that you're not a worry, that you're a warrior and you can actually win this war, but you have to fight it. Even when you're tired, you just have to get up, lick your wounds and continue to fight. But know that you have something inside of you that the world is waiting on. And when you know that the world is waiting on it, you kind of can't allow yourself to let your depression, let your worries kind of hold you back from it because the world is waiting on you to be great because you are great. so much. I, like, I don't know if I'm supposed to call you Mr. Williams or right, you Dwayne. You call me Dwayne. Everyone calls me Dwayne. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for um, doing this. Um, I learned a lot. I took away from it, like, one of the most uh, kind of just memorable things that you said was you're not a worrier because like I had to take a minute y'all because he talks a little fast so I had to take a minute and be like oh, what was that you're not a worrier like you're not worrying you're a warrior so that was really deep to me I like the wordplay and 
Um, I mean, it's hard, you know, when you're in PA school, you, you do worry a lot. You worry right. about your grades and yeah. how many tests you have coming up and um, how you're going to pass this, how you're going to write this note, that kind of thing. Um, so just being able to understand that you have to keep pushing through it yes. and um, be a warrior and uh, fight through it and, and overcome, like that's that's inspiring and that's, uh, that's really um, beneficial to me, especially because I only have a couple weeks. Woo Until I get into clinicals, y'all, in second sem second year of um, PA school. So I'm really excited about that. Thank you so much. Um, again, if you guys have not already, like, I don't know if you guys paused this video and you went and you bought this book, but you should have. And if you haven't, go right now to www.pantspreppro.com. Get this book. It's really helpful. It's really beneficial, y'all. And also get, um, you know, look at his other products as well and see if there's anything else that you might benefit from. I know a lot of people benefit from the medical mnemonic books, so go ahead and cop that one too if you have the funds to do so. Tell them about the app! Tell them about the app! Yes. Oh, oh yes, and it's coming, coming out June coming. 2018. You said, yes. what is it called? Flip? It's called Pants Prep Pants. App. Okay, Pants Prep App. So, but I do have Flip Med App out that's currently okay. out right now okay. as well. Okay. So. okay. So he has two apps you got, guys, the Flip Med app and then the Pants Prep app. Um, so get that June 2018 is coming out. Um, yes. Go support him. Uh, Please. He is single-handedly. <laughs> single Don't say single. <laughs> Don't say poor single. <laughs> he's putting out, he's putting out PAs, you guys. He's helping us pass and helping us become great clinicians. Guys, go support him. Um, Again, I really, really want to thank you for this. And thank you guys so much for watching this. If yes. you want to reach out to Dwayne, he does have an Instagram. Um, what's your Instagram handle so where they can reach you? If sure. They have any questions or it's like pants that. underscore prep underscore pearls. Okay. So. How original, right? <laughs> <laughs> so go hit him up at pants underscore prep underscore pearls on Instagram. Um, you can send him an email at the website as well where you can buy the books. Yes. And um, just, you know, you can ask him a couple questions. Not when he's out eating, okay? You guys respect his privacy. It's not that time. Let him eat his steak in peace. But um, <laughs> other than that, uh, we had a great time had doing this time. true life. I'm really excited. Um, I'm glad that you guys got to learn a little bit more about Mr. Williams, Dwayne, and uh, just see what he's about and the whole process about following his dreams to make Pants Prep Pearls and the Dwayne A. Williams empire uh, come to fruition. Um, again, if you haven't already done so, go hit up my other True Life series. And thank you guys so much for watching. Yes. Be a warrior, not a warrior, you guys. Um, stick to it. You guys can make it. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye. Um, you know, honestly, I was so impressed by, you know, what Adana's doing for a few reasons. One, because I remember when I was in PA school, I could barely have time to brush my teeth, much less do anything else. Um, so the fact that you're able to do all that you're doing while being in PA school, um, I think it's it's amazing that alone. Um, two is that I think that our profession is, you know, is only 50 years old, which may seem like a long time, but it's really not. You know, in terms of our profession is growing leaps and bounds, um, and there are certain things that are what I call gaps in terms of whether it be gaps in education or gaps in things that are, are things that are in place that are not there right now. And I think you're basically creating a, a niche for yourself for a place that's really needed. I'm great in terms of board review stuff and medicine, but I was I graduated 16 years ago. So that process of going through PA school and trying to apply, I don't really know what that's like anymore. And I think most people who are practicing don't really know what that's like. So for you to take what your experience is and using that your trials now to become a triumph and also to basically help other people out I honestly think it's inspiring even to me who's on the other side, you know, because it takes a lot to do that. It takes a lot to basically follow your passion, to believe in yourself despite people, you know, saying to you whether they like what you're doing or not like what you're doing, to kind of continue to do that. I think it's it's inspiring. I would say that do what you're doing because the world is also waiting on you for it as well. Well, thank you. Thank you. I feel, I feel super inspired right yes. now to continue. I, I really appreciate that. Like, it's cool. Um, hearing it from you because you know, like I read your book. Yeah. <laughs> I read your book almost every day while I'm studying, so that's really that's really cool. So. Especially because for me, like I know that when even with the book, like when I was writing the book, like I said, you know, I there was I didn't have a major publishing company, I didn't have any of those things in place, and I kind of almost had to like say to myself, you know, you can do this. You know, I didn't really have anyone show me that it's possible, 
I had to believe it. So being on the other side now, seeing you doing it and just saying like, no, you can do this um, and knowing that you can do it, it's, it's you know, it's, an, it's a blessing. Well, thank you. I really appreciate Definitely. that. Definitely. I really appreciate that. And I'm, I'm excited to see how much it's going to grow for you and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited too, but I'm just trying to pass PA school That's right. right? First so, things first. Like, let, me get, let me get the C at the end of my PA. That's right. right so. Not a C in the exam, but a C in no, the, no, the exam. No, at the end of my PA. <laughs> Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, dive a little bit more as to uh, more deeper as to uh, that's that's like the the surface. But okay. what's a little like what's what's a little bit more story behind why you wanted to make it? Like you saw that, but even when you got the idea, what was next? Like it was like how, how long did it take you to really turn that thought into like I'm really gonna do this? I guess okay. give us a little bit more story. Sure. To behind that. Oh, just ask, can you ask me the question one more time? Just so <laughs> it kind of, 